Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this suitcase lollipop holder here using Cricut Design Space. I'm going to show you exactly how I made this one in this video. These are cute little party favors. You can also use them for other things like, um, let's say, Valentine's Day. I made this one for Valentine's Day. I didn't put the straps on this one. Um, you can use your imagination on what you want to do with them. There's another one for a birthday party. It's all up to you how you um, design it and what you use it for. Okay, the supplies I used was, I used this um, double-sided photo paper here. It's glossy. And I like it because it's only 37 pounds. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. I also use this for my um, chip bags. I'm gonna be using cardstock on this. And I got this from Joann Fabric and um, Craft Store when it was on sale for $10 for, I mean, I'm sorry, $2 for 10 sheets. Okay. Um, this is the glue I, I'm using. I saw this on Amazon and um, I thought I was buying an eight ounce bottle of this, but it turned out to be 16 ounces. And I think at the time it was only $5 a bottle. So I decided to go ahead and order two since it was so cheap. But imagine my surprise when I got them and found out that they were 16 ounce bottles. So I'm gonna have this for a while. I mean, this glue is it's not bad at all. It dries really fast and it dries clear. And I transferred it to a little small squeeze bottle here to make it easier to work with. I also got these lollipops from Dollar Tree. It came 27 in a pack. And you can use um, whatever lollipops you can find where the um, stick will fit in the hole here in the template. And I'm going to put a link for the, where I got the template as well. So let's go ahead and get started on how I made this in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so we're going to start off by opening up a new project in Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to upload the template. The template that I'm using comes from Andrina's Creations. I'm going to put a link in the description as to where you can purchase it. I'm going to click on Upload Image. And I could um, click on Browse here and go search for the, the um, template I plan to use. But I like to keep my photos open at, down at the bottom here. And when you purchase um, the template from Andrina's Creations, you're going to get two documents. One you can use in um, Silhouette Studio. The other one is an SVG. And we're going to use the SVG here in Cricut Design Space. So I'm just going to click on it and drag it in. Okay, once we get here, what I like to do is I like to add tags to everything that I bring into Cricut Design Space. And I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. Um, this is a template, so one of my tags is gonna be template. One is going to be lollipop, because that's what we're using it for. One is gonna be suitcase. Okay, I'm gonna click upload here now the reason I put tags on everything I upload um, is because I'll show you um, I'm gonna click on view all here for recent uploads I'm gonna click on view all here when you click on view all you're gonna see everything you've ever uploaded to Cricut design space I have to get my minute here it takes a little time Okay, so everything I've ever uploaded to Cricut Design Space is here under View All. This is everything. And the reason why I put tags on everything because it'll help me find things a lot faster. Okay, so right now I'm getting ready to use the suitcase lollipop holder here. 
And um, let's say that you want to use this for later, for a kid's birthday or Halloween or even Christmas or whatever, Easter coming up. And you've done a lot of other projects and it kind of got lost in all of this other uploads. I could come here and I could type in um, template. And every template I've ever uploaded to Cricut Design Space is going to show up here. Every single one of them. I don't think I've done anything with a lollipop or suitcase. So I'm going to try something else. Like we just had Valentine's Day. I'm going to type in Valentine. Everything that I've tagged with Valentine is going to show here. Like this... Um, this one right here. Not only did I tag it with Valentine, but I tagged it with hearts and I tagged it with balloon. So if I key in balloon here, it will show up here as well. And of course, everything else that I've tagged with balloon. I also tagged it with heart. I'll type in heart and it shows up again along with everything I've tagged with heart. So this is why I say always, always, always give whatever you're using, whatever you're uploading to Cricut Design Space tags and try to give it more than one tag like I did this one. I tagged it with Valentine, I tagged it with heart, I tagged it with balloon. I'm pretty sure I tagged it with other things, but I can't quite remember. But it'll show up, whatever name I put here. Like, um, I think I did just cars. I don't know if I did car or cars. But I did um, Hot Wheels for um, a family member. And all the cars that I pulled in, I tagged with cars. See, so that's why I'm saying you should always put tags on everything you upload it'll make it so much easier to find like with the template um if you use the same template for several different projects and you don't want to keep uploading that template to Cricut design space if you tag it and then type in template then you can come and find that template that easily okay that's just something I thought, you know, you all should know. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that in a tutorial for Cricut Design Space. Okay, so I'm going to click on Upload. Once I upload it, it's going to show here. I'm just going to click on it to select it, and then we're going to click Add to Canvas. Okay, so it uploaded to the canvas, and I know this by looking at the layers here but you can't see anything right here what I usually do when that happens is I change the position the X and Y position up here use that just type in um, one and one for both so one tab one and there it is um, that's just the way I do it it's up to you how you do it once you get the um, template loaded to your canvas this is in several groups here. We're going to have to ungroup it. Okay. These are the instructions on what to do with the actual templates here. It says change template size while grouped to 11.887 in width by 7.602 in height, making sure lock proportions is locked while resizing. So what's basically what it's telling us to do is to change the width to 11.887. And it should automatically change the height to 7.602, which it has done here. So with the instructions here, we can go ahead and delete. We don't need those anymore. Now, I want this to be at one and one. 
what it's doing, what in this position is giving me a little work room at the top and down the side. So what I'm going to do now is, um, well, I'm going to explain to you exactly what each piece is for. This pink piece is the base. And with the pink piece, what you're going to do is you're going to layer it with these other two pieces if you choose to do so. That's where everything is going to go. This blue piece, you can use this to cut um, glitter paper, foil paper, metallic paper, whatever paper you want, even just cardstock. It's up to you. This um, piece right here, you can use this for background paper, for digital paper, or whatever you want to use it for. That's basically what this one is for. You don't have to use these uh, both of these pieces here. You do need your base, but you don't have to use these two if you don't want to. It's up to your design of how you want to do it. I'm going to use all three pieces in this um, tutorial. So now I'm going to um, ungroup it. Okay, this one right here, our base. This one mostly has all of the um, score lines here. But when you bring it into Cricut Design Space, they are not score lines. They are called basic cut lines. I know in um, Silhouette Studio, I'm not sure exactly how you do it, but I know that you can put those in and you can click on something that says no cut, which makes them score lines, but it does not work the same in, in um, Cricut Design Space. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to change all of these basic cut lines to score lines. And I'm gonna to have to ungroup this. And I'm gonna click on the score, the, well, they're basic cut lines now. I'm gonna go up to operation and click this down arrow here. And I'm gonna choose score. And what it did was it changed all those basic cut lines to score lines. But that's not all you need to do. Um, you can leave it like this if you want to. But when you go to cut this, um, you're going to see your score to go up and down, up and down, up and down. It's going to basically draw a line, go up, come down, draw a line, go up. And it's just going to keep doing that. And whether or not you realize it, that is time consuming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to change. I'm going to delete all of these except for one. And then I'm going to stretch that one across the whole page here. And when I go to cut this, you're going to see my score tool just go one quick smooth swipe across. Instead of seeing it go, draw a line, go up, come down, draw a line, go up, come down, draw a line, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup this. And I think there are two sets of um, group, yeah, score lines here. So I'm going to ungroup them all. Okay. I'm going to come down here to my um, left-hand corner here where I can zoom in and zoom out. It doesn't pop up until you bring your um, your mouse down here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing here. And it's best to actually have something selected before using your zoom, because if you have something selected, when you zoom in and zoom out, well, especially when you zoom in, it's going to zoom in on what you have selected. Okay. And you can zoom in as far as 700% and you can zoom out as um, low as 25%. Okay. So in this situation, I am going to just click on one of these and I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to click on the other one. And one thing I want to pay close attention to is where is my Y 
position, my horizontal position. And you can see this is at 1.673. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm just going to move it a little closer to the edge here. I'm just taking a look at where I have it. I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to drag it to the other end by using this arrow here, this, these double arrows. Okay. It does not look like it's all the way over, but it really is. It's all the way over. So when um, I go to cut this, my um, score tool is just going to make a quick line. And then it's going to jump over here and do the same thing. I'm going to click on this one and ungroup it. I'm going to click on one and delete it. I'm using the delete key on my keyboard. And I'm going to click on this one. And I'm going to pay attention to my um, Y position, 1.673. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and move it to the edge. OK, holding down your shift key, it helps keep um, your position, whatever position you're in, horizontally. It'll keep it from jumping and moving to a different position. You don't want it to change position. You want it to stay exactly where the creator put it um, horizontally. And then I'm just going to grab the double arrows and I'm going to drag it over to the other end. And I'm just going to click on it again and check and make sure it's still in that position, 1.673. Now I'm going to come down to this one. And I'm going to just click on one and delete. I'm going to do this for all except for one. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to look at my position, 2.173. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to move it to the edge. And I want to make sure that it is still set at 2.173. And then I'm just going to drag it to the other end. OK. Now, it looks exactly like it did um, before I did this. It does look like I have um, a line here, space, a line here, and space. But when I go to cut it, you're going to see my um, score tool just go straight across like this one quick smooth swipe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change these two. And I'm going to leave this one exactly the way it was brought in when I uploaded this. But of course, I changed them to score lines. But I'm going to leave it still um, grouped. They're all score lines. And I'm going to show you what I mean by um, watching your score to jump up and down to make these lines. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of these. Okay, so if you do not change these to score lines when you open this up and you leave them at cut, basic cut lines, they're going to cut little slits all through your, um, your um, shape here. So you have to turn them into score lines. And I do suggest that you just do it the way that I just did it instead of just leaving them all there as score lines because you're going to see your machine, like I said, go across smoothly, quickly and smoothly. If you leave them all as score lines, if you change them all from basic cut lines to score lines and leave them exactly the way they are, it's going to take a little longer to make all those score lines. And it's just a lot quicker 
to watch it make um, one quick smooth run across, then sit and watch it make a line, go up, come down, make a line, go up, come down, make a line, go up. And there's a lot of score lines here, so I'm just trying to save you a little time. At this time, before I um, attach these together, if you want your base um, to be a different color than pink, like mine is going to be a dark blue, this is the time to change it. So click on your shape, click on the color here, and change it to whatever color you want. I'm going to change it to blue, a darker blue, because this is um, the colored paper that I'm going to be using. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to attach it. You cannot you cannot group it. If you group it when you go to make it, you're going to find your shape on a mat by itself and you're going to find all of your um score lines on a mat by itself. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to group it And then I'm going to click on make it. Okay, you see what I mean here? These are all of my um, score lines. They are on a mat by themselves. And this is my blue shape. And as you can see, you cannot see any of the score lines because they are here on this page and they do not go together. So. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to ungroup it, and then I'm going to grab everything again, and I'm going to attach it. Now that it's attached, let me show you what it looks like and make it. Okay, and there you go. This is my shape, and you can also see the score lines. Okay, so you have to attach. You cannot group. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color of these to blue as well, and I'm going to change um, the basic cut lines to score lines also. Okay, so now I'm 
going to leave this the color that it is because I'm going to be using cardstock. I'm not going to use um, glitter paper or metallic paper or foil paper or anything like that. I am still going to use cardstock for this. And it's going to be a lighter blue cardstock. But I do need to fix this one here because it has um, uh, what's supposed to be score lines there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to click on these lines. As you can see, they're basic cut lines. I'm going to change them to score lines. They've been changed to score lines. I'm going to ungroup them. I'm going to click on one and delete it. I'm going to click on the other one. Check its position, its Y position. 7.79. I'm going to hold down my shift key. And I'm going to bring it to the edge. And then I'm just going to drag it to the other end. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I have that selected. I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to grab the shape as well. And I'm going to attach it. Okay. So I have to do the same for these as well. Okay, so I went on ahead and changed the um, score lines on these two pieces here. I didn't bother to record it because I'm trying to cut the video down, video down as much as I possibly can. This is going to end up being a quite long video. Okay. Now I'm going to grab these pieces right here. I'm going to move them over a little bit. What I need to do right now is um, I need to grab a couple of these pieces over here. They're going to go on the inside of um, my base. These pieces are the outside. It's going to go on the outside of the base here. And I need to grab um, a few of these pieces to put on the inside. I'm going to grab this piece right here first and move it to the side because it's only going to be on the inside. It's not going to be on the outside. I'm going to click on this piece. I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on that piece. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate them. Oops, what did I do? Okay, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate. I think I hit delete. I'm going to drag them over here. These two pieces here. I'm just going to move them up. Okay. These pieces are going to go on the inside, on the other side of this space here. I'm going to do the same thing with this one here as well. Let me scoot over a little. Um, I'm only going to need just three of these pieces as well. And they're also gonna go on the outside. I need, um, for the outside, I'm gonna need all of these pieces. For the inside, I think I'm only going to need three of these. So it's gonna be this piece, Hold down my shift key, this piece, and this piece. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to move these to the side, but what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to flip them vertically. And this is how they're going to look on the inside. This piece right here is going to be the top piece, and you're going to see the piece up here is where the um, the lollipop um, um, stick is going to be in a piece that's up here. And um, this is the middle, and this is going to be at the bottom. This is one that I'm going to put a message on. But what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to bring it. Hold on. I'm going to grab them, and I'm going to bring it closer to here because this is um, where I'm going to put my um, digital paper on. 
Okay, um, first I'm gonna show you um, where I got my digital paper and my um, images from. I got most of it from Creative Fabrica. Um, this is the digital paper that I'm going to use. And I also got um, the Rocket from this set right here. And what I really like about this set is that it comes in different, several different formats. It comes in, um, let's see, here. It comes in PNG, SVG, EPS, PDF, and um, JPEGs as well. And with this rocket, I'm gonna show you um, how I use it to um, change the color of my wording. I got this one from Etsy. Um, I actually um, like these astronauts here, and they also comes in SVGs, um, DXF, EPS, JPEG, and PNG. And this is the font that I'm using to from Creative Fabrica. It's called Big Space Font. I'm gonna put links to all of this in the description in case you all are interested. I'm going to click on Upload and click Upload Image and I have my folder open I'm going to drag it in try it again I'm going to click on complex. I've um, tried clicking on simple one time and I only use complex when I come here. I clicked on simple one time and it changed the color of my image. I don't know why I did that but it did and I clicked on uh, moderately complex one time and it also changed my image. So I don't ever use those two. I always use complex. I don't need to make any changes here. So I'm going to apply and continue. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to add my tags. I'm going to say digital paper. Oops. And I'm going to say space because I am using it for space. I can actually put um, stars too. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Okay, I'm going to click Upload, and click on it, upload the canvas, most of the time when um, I load up an image to um, the canvas, it comes in really, really big. Um, as you can see up here, the size of this, what I usually do is just um, change the height to two inches. That way I can move it where I want to move it a little bit easier. I'm going to put this like right over these purple shapes here. Stretch it out over all of it. And I'm going to right click and send it to the back. And that's about where I want it. Okay, now I know in um, Silhouette Studio, you can pretty much grab all of this and click on crop somewhere, and it takes care of all of this that quickly. This doesn't happen in um, Cricut Design Space. 
in Cricut design, design Space, you have to use what is called um, Slice. So, and with Slice, you can only do two objects at a time, only two. So I'm gonna click on this, click on one of the shapes here. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and click on the digital paper. Try that again. Then I'm gonna come down here and click on slice. Then I'm just gonna right click on my own digital paper, send it to the back. Pull my shift key down, click on another shape and slice. I have to do this for each and every single piece. Right click, send it to the back. Hold on my shift key, pick another shape, and slice. Okay, this piece right here, I cannot slice it by just picking those two. As you can see, the slice button had disappeared. It's only because this piece right here is actually three pieces. You see it over here? We have two basic cut lines and we have the shape here. So I'm gonna have to um, ungroup these first. Click on it. I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the other score lines. I'm gonna turn them into score lines, these basic cuts. Turn them into score lines. I'm going to ungroup them. I'm going to delete one. And the other. I'm going to check my position because I want it to stay where it is. Hold down my shift key. Oh, actually, no, I can't do that right now. I have to do this first. I have to grab the shape, grab my um, digital paper and slice. Okay. Then, now I can um, remove this. And I noticed that I got, make sure I got all the pieces sliced here. I can go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna grab all the purple pieces and I'm gonna click on them individually because my, um, the slices that I want are behind these purple pieces. Grab those, pull them to the side. I'm gonna group these and I'm gonna just hide them Right now you see they're grouped and I'm gonna click on this eye to hide them. And just in case I need to bring them back for something, I can. Now I go back to this piece. Okay, this one, I'm gonna right click on it and send it to the back. Then I'm gonna grab my own slice here. And I'm going to move it to the edge. And then I'm going to bring it across. And with it selected, hold on my shift key, click on the shape, and I'm going to attach them. Okay. 
now I'm going to add my um, my images. I'm going to pull this piece out first because this is the front of my um, suitcase. I'm going to pull it to the side where I can work on it better. And right now, um, what I'm going to pull in um, is the rocket. I'm going to click on upload. Upload image here. And I'm going to, I got my folder open, so I'm going to pull up the folder. Now with this one, this is the PNG. I don't want to pull in the PNG. I want to pull in the SVG. Um, PNGs are just um, images with transparent backgrounds. And they're basically like pictures. Um, it's just one solid piece. I can't use a PNG to show you what I need to show you. I have to use an SVG. But I'm going to come to this folder and I'm going to get the name of this one. Outer Space Color 30. I'm going to back up a couple of um, folders here. And I'm going to go to my SVG folder of everything. And in here, because they're all SVGs, I can't just click on one and look at an image. It doesn't show SVG images. I'm, I'm using a PC, so I don't know if that makes a difference or not. But I know that the name, the number of the picture is 30. So that's the one I'm looking for. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to drag it in. This is what it looks like, the SVG. Put my tags on it. Upload. Click on it. Add it to my canvas. I'm just going to make it smaller. While I'm at it, come over here and grab these two strips here. Bring them over. Zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two strips to this um, shape here first. I'm going to bring it down. I want to get it on this corner here. So I'm going to grab these two pieces and I'm going to align it at the top first and then I'm going to align it to the left. And then I'm going to just group them for now. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Bringing it to the front. I'm going to grab them. Align it at the top and align it at the right. And I'm just going to group it. And I'm only grouping it for now because I don't want either one of these um, strips to move and I don't want the um, rectangle to move while I'm working on this. Okay, let me bring this to the front. The reason why I say you need to use, hold on. The reason why I say you need to use an SVG here is because I want to use some of the colors in this rocket for my words. And I can only do that with an SVG because an SVG, as you can see, is broken down by colors. Okay. And a PNG, like I said, is a transparent picture. It will not break down like this. It would just come in as a picture and that's it. That's the same thing with the JPEG. This only works with an SVG. You cannot pull colors from a PNG or a JPEG. You have to use an SVG. 
Okay, so I'm going to get this how I want it. Just leave it like that for now. Now I'm going to do my wording. I'll make sure I have my font, and this is the font that I want to use, Big Space. I'm going to type in all caps, Jalen's. I'm going to bring it down to size. I'm going to change the height to 0 0.50. I'm going to bring it over here to, to, to the size so you can see what I'm doing. And then the next one, well, actually, yeah, I can do that. Next one, I'm going to put 3RD, the third. Bring it down a little. I want it to fit like right under his name. Grab these. I'm going to center them horizontally. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to change the color of this to that blue inside that window of this rocket. So, with this um, selected, I'm going to come up here and click on Color Sync. And what this is going to do is going to show me all the colors in that rocket and all these other. Um, cut shapes here and here is the window here and all I got to do is just drag these up to that color just um, click on them and drag Okay, now what I want to do is I want to put um, a couple of offsets on this. And the first offset, I want it to be the same color as this yellow here. So I'm going to click on offset. The default for an offset is 0 0.25. That is going to be way too big. And I'm just going to show it to you. And you see how big it is all the way around? That is way too big. I don't want it that big. I'm going to take it down to 0 0.04. And I'm going to click right here in this little white space right here and let the apply button reset itself. Once it's done, you can see it now a lot better. It's a lot smaller around it. I'm going to click on apply. The default color of an offset is black. And you see it right here. So I'm just going to drag it down to the yellow here. And there we go. I'm going to give it one more offset. And it's still set at 0 0.04, which is what I want. So I'm going to click on Apply. And then I'm going to go and find this one. And I'm going to drag it to the red. And that red that's on the rocket here. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these, go back to the layers here, and I'm going to flatten these. Okay. Bring it over here. The rocket I'm going to make a little smaller, fit it all in there. And I'm trying to keep these within the line of these 
strips here. I don't want them to go outside the strips because when I get ready to put this together, I am going to be putting these strips here. And I don't want these strips to be over on top of the images that I'm putting in here right now. That is the whole purpose of me putting these strips on here just to make sure that I can keep it all within those lines there. I think that's good. Now I'm going to click on the shape back here and I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to do it twice. And now I'm going to grab these strips, put them to the side. And then I'm going to grab these three pieces here and I'm going to flatten it. Now I'm flattening it, I'm, I'm flattening it because when this gets ready to print and cut, what it's going to do is just going to cut around that rectangle and that's it. If I were to attach this, it would literally cut out the rectangle. It would cut out all three of these here, the names and the, um, the two offsets, and it would also cut out each and every piece of the rocket. That's why you cannot attach it. You have to flatten it. Okay, so I'm going to move this back over here. And I want to put a picture on the back of the suitcase as well. So I'm going to um, go in and get my own. Um, I got um, four, four images I want to put on that. So I'm going to go to upload. And here I can only bring in one image at a time. So I got my folder open. I'm going to use this one. First, let me click on upload here. I want this astronaut. And these are PNGs. I don't need to use an SVG on this because I don't want I don't want a color from any of these. So I'm going to use the PNGs on this one. I'm just going to drag it in. Click on complex, upload. I don't need to make any changes here. If I had a, um, a white background here, this is where I would um, remove it. I'm gonna give my um, tags. Click on my image, upload. Then I'm going to go ahead and just get the other ones while I'm still here. Okay, for this last shape, I'm going to use a JPEG instead of a PNG because I just want to show you how you can remove your background. Go to my JPEG folder. And I want to use this um, spaceship here. As you can see, there's a white background on that. So when I get to this um, screen here, you can see that it has a white background. I can't use this one right here. This is part of the um, subscription of Cricut Access. I don't have Cricut Access. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use, um, I'm going to remove this background manually. And I got um, the magic wand selected and I'm just going to click where I see white. And it's going to remove it. I got all the white that I want removed, removed, and I'm going to click 
here and then get my tags. Oh, can't spell. I'm going to grab, I'm going to click on these four. And then I'm going to click Add to Canvas. They're going to come in kind of large. Okay, I'm just going to click on one of them here. And just um, bring the height down to two inches. Oh, I brought them all down at one time. I never tried that before, but okay. Now that I know it works, I'm just going to start placing them. Oh, forgot. I need to put these two back. Do what I did before, I'm gonna align it at the top. Align it to the left. Group it. Just bring it to the top. Grab these two. Oops, hit the wrong one. Line it at the top. Line it to the right. And we're gonna group it to hold it in place. Do some resizing on all of these. And I want to also put an offset on these. I'm turning him a little to the right because I want it to look like he's kind of floating in the air, floating in space. Offset I'm going to set at zero four. Waiting for the apply to change here. Okay, and I think I want to change it to yellow. Okay, now I'm going to ungroup this rectangle from the strips. Strips to the side. Grab all of this. 
and flatten it. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about these strips right now. Um, these are the ones that are gonna be on the inside. This one right here is the only one that I'm going to put um, a little message on it. Okay, so I have to share this with you. Um, right when I was about to click on my um, text tool here, Cricut Design Space locked up on me. It literally froze, it locked up. And I had to shut it down and bring it back up in order to get it to work again. Now, um, a few updates back. Cricut um, set it up where if if Design Space shuts down on you, if it locks up, if it freezes and you have to exit out of it and bring it back up, when you bring it back up, wherever you were in your document, in your project at that time, it's going to bring you right back to that point. Whether you saved your document or not, it's going to automatically bring you right back to where you were last. Now, when you bring it back up, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and save it, but I'm not going to save this right now. Um, but yeah, that, that that's a really nice update that they added. It's like you literally will not lose your document. If, it's, if it froze up on you, shut down, locked up, or whatever, when you bring it back up, it's going to bring you right back to where you were when it shut down on you. Um, also, when I brought it back up, they had installed another update and they actually installed it on the text tool here and um, I can't remember exactly what it said but um, I did test it before um, I started recording again so let me um, I'm gonna just do it like this because when I click on this it's gonna do something completely different than what it did um, just an hour ago so when I click on it now, instead of getting that little small rectangular box that you have to click on and type your text in, it's giving me this now. It just says text and it's highlighted. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on this down arrow and I'm going to choose my font that I want to use, which is big space. I'm going to click on it. Okay. Now it's not highlighted anymore. And I can't just start typing in it. So I gotta double click on it now. And um, I can do it this way. Or I can just hit the backspace key to take out that text. And then I'm just gonna type in um, what I was going to type in before it shut down on me. Thank you for Facing out with me. And now I have to click off of it first and then click back on it and move it. And I'm also going to um, change the height on this. Whenever I change the height on anything, I always, I mean, whenever I change the um, size of anything, I always click on the height. I never, never, ever click on the, the width. I always use the height. Now, as you can see, I want to um, align this as center. And I feel like there's too much space in between these words here. So I can come up here and I can click this down arrow under line spacing. But as you see, it would take forever for me to get what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of that and I'm going to type in a negative five okay as you see it took away some of that space and i'm gonna bring this back near this okay what i did with this text here is the same thing i want to do with this text but i cannot use this rocket anymore because i flattened this now and basically this is like a png or jpeg right now because it turned itself into a printing cut it does not recognize this rocket as an SVG anymore, so I can't use it. And I'm going to go to the color sync here to show you. 
as you can see, the colors for that um, rocket is gone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that rocket back in. I'm gonna click on my upload button here. I'm gonna click on the rocket and I'm gonna add to canvas. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this down a little. I don't need it that big. And click on this again and I'm gonna go back to my color sink. And as you can see, all the colors are back now. I'm gonna grab this um, T here for my text and I'm gonna drag it down to the window. And I'm gonna put my offsets on it. I'm gonna change this to 0 0.05. Give it a little click here to reset the supply button. Okay, it still has, a, okay, it's adjusted. So I'm gonna click on apply. You can see it's turned it black. I'm gonna grab it from here and I'm gonna bring this down to the yellow. I'm gonna set, I'm gonna do another offset, 0 0.05, give that a little click to reset that apply. Hit apply. And here it is, and I'm gonna bring this down to the red. Okay, now I'm just gonna make sure I got all three of these um, selected here, and I'm gonna click on flatten. Okay, um, as you can see, um, that red turned to black, and I don't know why it did that. It's been doing this for a little while now, and I don't, I don't know why it's doing it, but in order for me to fix this, I'm gonna have to unflatten it. I'm gonna click off of it, and I'm gonna just separate these. And there's the black. And I know I changed it to red, you saw me do it, but for some reason it's adding an extra offset to this, and I don't know why it's doing that. I don't see it here. I don't know if I'm pressing the button twice or whatever, but if this happens to you, you can just pull it out and delete it like I'm doing here. And then I'm just gonna go down here, make sure I got all three of these. I'm gonna align and center it. I just felt like I needed to show you guys that just in case it happens to you and you're wondering why. Now you know how to fix it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um. Flatten this. And I don't need the rocket anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And I'm gonna um, zoom in on this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna size it down to fit this piece right here. I'm gonna grab it. And I'm gonna click on Align and center it. And that's what I want. Let me grab this and flatten it. Okay. Now, Okay, I don't need to grab this and put it back here or grab these two and put them back over here because once I click on Make It, Make It is gonna do all that adjusting for me. So when I click on Make It, as you can see, it's saying sorting project into mats by color. So I'm gonna wait for it to finish doing this. As you can see, that's what it did. It sorted everything by color. Now when this happened, I found out that this right here is not the exact same color as this, and I'll show it to you in a minute. But this is what Cricut does. It sorts everything by the color of um, your project. It always puts your print and cut pages first. 
It always will put it on an eight and a half and 11, eight and a half by 11 sheet. And what it does is it tries to figure out how to use the least amount of paper. And that's why everything looks like it's extremely close here, but that's fine. It's literally trying to save you some paper here. Okay, this right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these two pieces to this mat. And it has this first one selected. I'm gonna click on these three dots and I'm gonna click on move project. Now, as you can see, this is the mat that it's on. This is the mat I'm gonna move it to. And as you can tell that this one is just a little bit lighter than this. So they're two different colors. So I'm just gonna click on this mat because this is the one where I want to move it to. And I'm gonna click on confirm. And it moved it. I'm gonna pull this over here. I can put it wherever I want. I can put it here. I can put it there, wherever I want. I'm just gonna put it there for now. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Click on those three dots. I'm going to click on Move Object. I'm going to pick this mat, and then I'm going to move it. I'm going to confirm it, and I'm going to move it. OK, once I click on Continue, this mat right here is going to disappear because there's nothing there. But I want to point out some other things to you guys. like. Design, design space automatically puts everything on a 12 by 12 um, mat. A 12 by 12 sheet is what it's thinking that you're going to cut it on. But if you have eight and a half by 11 cardstock that you want to um, cut this on, it could be cardstock, it could be foil paper, it could be whatever type of paper you have, glitter paper. If it's eight and a half by 11, you can come to this down arrow key here and click on eight and a half by 11. And see, it automatically changes to an eight and a half by eleven sheet, and it rearranges your shapes to fit that eight and a half by eleven sheet. And um, the same thing with this; it automatically puts it on um, a twelve by twelve. You can change it to eight and a half by eleven, or even if you're just using a scrap piece of paper, like I do when I first um, try a new project. I always use my scrap paper first before I use the actual paper I want to cut things out on. So if I were to use a scrap piece of paper, it would be like, I would say maybe six by eight or eight and a half. I would put that piece of paper on my mat and I would cut this out. I don't have to change um, the size of the paper or anything. As long as I know it will cut on that scrap piece of paper, that's the piece of paper that I'm gonna put on my mat. On my mat. Just wanna share that with you. And this, I mean, they have all kinds of settings here. It's not just 12 by 12, eight and a half by 11. It has um, eight and a half by 14. It also has, as you know, Cricut has the 12 by 24 mats. You can change it to 12 by 24. And you see, it looks like that here and also here. What are the best times too? also to use this um, 12 by 24 mat? I know you've seen those um, large cutouts that people sometimes use at parties and whatnot. That is like the best time to use your 12 by 24 mat. Also, let's say that I want to make like 12 of these suitcases all at once. I can come up here and change my copies from one to 12. And what it's going to do is updating project copies. It's um, setting up my machine to cut um, 12 copies instead of just one. Okay, now as you can see, um, I got a lot more here on each sheet. It's giving me um, eight sheets of print, then cut, which will equal to the 12 suitcases that I want. And also, for some reason, I don't know why I did this, but these, the two that was on this um, mat earlier that I moved to the other one, it automatically put them back on a um, 12 by 12 mat 
itself, but that's okay. You can still leave this here. You don't have to move all of these. You can still leave these here. You just have to make sure you have the, your right card stock on your cutting mat when it's time to cut. Now, when I click on this, you can tell it's giving me four sheets of these cutouts now. And if I was to change this to 12 by 24, it's gonna give me, I think it's gonna be two 12 by 24 cutout sheets here. Yes, one here and one there. Now this is fine. Um, if you have 12 by 24 cardstock paper, you do great cutting this out without any problem. But if you're trying to use two 12 by 12 sheets on your 12 by 24 mat, you have to pay close attention to where this is gonna cut off. Um, using 12 by 12 paper, it only allows you to cut within 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So as you can see, it would cut this off right here. You can take the time to move all this around if you want to, if that's what you want to do but that's a lot of work. So unless you have um, 12 by 24 paper, I suggest that you don't do that. And I wanna show you what it looks like on this one as well. Okay. So like this one right here, it would cut it off right here. That's not something you want to do. Now, I do have some um, 11 by 17 card stock. So if I were to choose 11 by 17, it will change this to fit a piece of paper that is 11 by 17. Okay, now you can see it's 11 by 17. So if you decide to change the um, size of the paper that you have, just make sure, I mean, if you're gonna use your 12 by 24 mat, make sure you have the right size of paper that you need to cut. I suggest not doing this on two 12 by 12 sheets of paper, unless you're gonna take the time to sit down and maneuver and move everything out of the cut here on that 11 and a half um, mark so stick with um, maybe your 12 by 12 mats to do that or if you have the paper then go for it okay I just thought I pointed out for maybe somebody who's looking at this video and who didn't possibly didn't know that okay now I want to talk about um, how I go about printing these pages like with this um, print and cut I'm going to be using um, double-sided photo paper for this and when I click down here on continue it's going to take me to this screen here and right now what it's doing is searching for my cutting machine here and um, once it's done with that I'm going to hit um, send to printer Okay, so I'm gonna click here. Okay, so when I get here, I always leave my ad bleed on, always leave it on. What this does is it's gonna add a little extra around each one of these pieces here. It's giving it like a buffer. So when I go to um, cut it, it won't cut like into either one, any, either of these pieces. And it, you won't see that little white on the end, on the either end or at the top or bottom, that little buffer is gonna keep that from happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on print. Okay, so I went on ahead and let this page print and I printed it on um, double-sided photo paper. My machine dial is set at light cardstock plus. I wanna set it to photo paper. So what I'm gonna need to do is turn the dial on my, um, on my cutting machine to um, custom. When I get there, I come to this set base material. I'm gonna click on browse all materials and I'm gonna type here photo paper. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to click on photo paper. I'm going to make sure I have that check there. Another thing I'm going to do is with this, I'm going to click on this star right here and I'm going to click done. And what that is going to do is going to add photo paper to my favorites. So that way I don't really have to go and search for it anymore. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. Okay, I'm not going to cut this out just yet. I want to go ahead and explain to you these other two pages. Like this one here, I'm cutting this on um, 65 pound paper. So I'm going to turn my dial on my machine back to light cardstock plus. And that's how I'm going to cut that. This dark blue here, the paper that I have, it's a lot thicker than I thought it was. Um, it's like a hundred pound paper. I bought it at Joanne when um, they had that 10 for two sale on and um, it is really heavy. And I um, found out that I'm going to have to use the hundred pound car stock setting. So in order to do that, because that's not on our on the dial on our machine, in order for me to do that, I have to go back to custom. And as you see here, this is my favorites here. And I added that Photoshop paper here. So anytime I put my machine on custom, I can click here if I want to use my photo paper. And I'm going to do the same thing with the um, 100 pound card stock. I had it there before, but I just wanted to show you guys what you can do with that. So I'm gonna click on Browse All Materials, and I'm gonna type in card stock up here. Okay, when you type in card stock, it gives you eight results of card stock. And here's the heavy card stock paper here. I wanna click on that, make sure I got my check, and then I wanna come down here and click on that star. I also want to show you that under cardstock, you also have glitter cardstock. And um, it has the 80 pound cardstock here as well, but you don't have to um, search for 80 pound cardstock because that is actually on the dial on our machine. Okay, like again, heavy cardstock. I got my um, check there, my start here, and we're gonna click done. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out all of this real quick, but I still want to show you this on the um, custom. Now I have the heavy car stock 100 pound set here. So the next time I want to cut this out and I set my machine to custom, I don't have to go and search for them anymore. They're both here. This is where they're going to be now. Now, as I was saying before, I'm going to go ahead and cut all this out and I'm going to get my um, table ready to put it together. I feel like this video is long enough, so I'm going to make a part two to this. Part two is going to be me putting it all together. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch the entire video. And I hope you learned a, a few things as well. So see you on the next video.